Welcome to Weasel Jaw Digital, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Thai Interceptor, specifically in regards to dogfighting. I did a general overview of the Interceptor earlier. Um, you can find that video. It's it's a good video. It kind of covers everything for both um, dogfighting and for fleet battles. But this video is strictly about dogfighting. I've been doing a lot of dogfighting matches. I'm getting pretty good at it. Um, I believe I know what works and what doesn't for this. So, to start with, I do want to talk that I do want to say that there are two kind of main builds that I see that works a lot. There's what I do, which is the rough and tumble, you know, dogfighting build. I get right into the heart of the action. I'm making quick turns. I'm engaging lots of targets. I'm doing lots of damage. I do get killed, um, but I try to take out far more enemy units than I than I lose myself. Um, you know, I've had some games where I've gotten into the twenties on kills, even a, a game with twenty four kills with a nineteen kill streak. Um, my average kills per game are sitting around eleven. Um, so, you know, that's the way I like to play. Not the only way to use these interceptors. Another very effective way to use these interceptors, and it's kind of the counter to my build, is the strafing build. What that build does is moves all the way across the battlefield. So it goes way out, makes sure it disengages with all everybody, turns around, comes into the battle, picks a target, fires off weapons that it makes a strafing run, maybe comes in behind it, finishes it off, then bursts away to, to escape combat. Um, that's a very effective way to play the Interceptor, and it's one of the most annoying targets I find in the game. Because I can never peg those guys down. I can never get locks on them. I can never do enough damage before they burst away. They're always running power to engines so they can escape really fast. Um, so, you know, that's a very effective way. It's a very defensive way. They don't die very often. They don't take many deaths. But less time in the actual heart of the action means fewer kills, too. So they stay alive longer. They get killed less. But they end up doing less damage and getting less kills overall. Still very effective. Um, still very good. Um, they know how to play. I, they're, they're good pilots. I like seeing them on my team. I hate seeing them on the opposing team. So let's get right into things here. We have four weapon systems. First we'll talk about is the Plasburst Laser Cannon. Um, I don't like it. It does a lot of damage. It can knock out A-Wings um, in one hit if you have your weapons charged. It can just nail them. Problem is it's very close range which isn't a huge deal because you have to be so accurate with this weapon that being short range is probably better for you anyways. Otherwise you'd be wasting a lot of shots. The second downfall is that it does have kind of a slow rate of fire and you have to charge that weapon to get the most use out of it. So you're limited. If you have a really steady hand, if you can really aim well, if you can really anticipate what the enemy is doing, um, if you can really position yourself good attack runs, this Plasburst laser cannon is pretty effective. Um, it can be pretty good. I've never seen it used by the best pilots out there. Um, I find, at least with myself, if I'm using that weapon, I'm missing shots where I could be getting some damage on with the other weapons. So I tend to find it's not great. I hate getting killed by it, but it doesn't happen very often. The ion cannons are not good. Not for dogfighting. Um, you're not going to be in a situation where this really comes in handy for you. You're going to disable an enemy ship. You're going to take down their shields. Um, but they're going to regen those shields. They're going to start their ship back up again and escape before you can destroy them. If you're part of a larger group, you're playing with three, four friends, and you know they're going to back you up and they're going to kill the targets that you hit with the ions then that's a different scenario. But if you're going in one or two players into dogfight matches, you're going to end up just not being that effective. 
you're going to be annoying for sure, but you're not going to be super effective. There is the standard laser cannon, good range of a thousand meters, um, really good sustained fire. You can shoot for a long time, even if you have your powers to set to engines. Um, you can still fire for like a good six seconds of continued fire, um, even longer if you're charging your weapons. So this is a really great weapon for strafers and for people that might try to joust. Um, using this against an A-wing that has the uh, rapid fire cannon, you're going to beat them because you're going to be able to get damage on them at a longer range. So if you're a strafer, this is the, the weapon I would choose. Um, it's okay for the dogfighters, but it's better for the strafers. For your dogfighters, you really only have one choice, and that's a rapid fire cannon. There are some downfalls. Um, it has very limited ammo capacity, and it goes through the ammo very quickly. It also has a very limited range. So you really shouldn't be jousting this thing. I do it all the time. It's stupid. It's dumb. I pay the price for it. Um, but you don't want to be jousting. That's not what this ship is for. That's not what this weapon is for. So you want to try to get behind them or at least be coming in from the side. You get into that 600 meters and you can just lay that fire into them. It also makes it really easy to lead because you can see if you're a little bit ahead or a little bit behind them. So it'll really help you hone in that target. The amount of damage it does is very incredible. Now, if you do not have your weapon, or you do not have your engine... Ah, if you do not have your energy to weapons, you can only shoot for about two seconds and you just run out of ammo. So if you're using the rapid fire cannon, you're almost always going to have your energy set strictly to weapons. Power has to be to weapons. So that means you're going to have very limited, you know, bursting ability and whatnot. Um, now the interceptor can swap some power around, which is really handy. So you can kind of overcome that deficit, um, but you're going to be running almost always power to weapons. Um, so if you're the brawler, if you're a dogfighter, rapid fire cannons. If you're a strafer, you can use the rapid fire, but I find that the laser cannons are probably a better choice for you. We're going to skip our ox weapons and we're going to come back to those. So we're going to go to our countermeasures. There's four countermeasures. There's really only one good one. Um, your chaff particles suck. They release a uh, cloud of chaff behind you. If that missile's coming directly from behind you, it works. If that mine is coming directly from behind you, it works. However, it's a limited area of effect. It only lasts for three seconds, and it's got a nine-second cooldown with only three uses. Um, it doesn't help if that missile's coming from in front of you, or from the sides, or the top, or the bottom. This is a three-dimensional game, and it only works from missiles coming from behind you. So, yeah, it's just not great. The sensor inverter is interesting. Um, area of effect of 300 meters, so you got to let the missile get fairly close. Has a long cooldown of 18 seconds and only two uses. But it does corrupt the missiles and send them back at the person that fired them. And that sounds really interesting. However, I find it's not that useful. Um, this is one of those systems that, when it's used against me, is meaningless. It's pointless. I'm going to have countermeasures. I'm going to be able to evade it. Chances are they're going to be far enough away that it's really not that big of a concern to me. I've never been hurt by um, a corrupted missile. I've always been able to counter it or evade it. So I don't find it's all that useful. It may work better for you. You may find it works really well. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. The sensor jammer is kind of interesting. Um, it's useful. I'm annoyed a little bit about it when I see someone use it, but it usually doesn't save them. It just delays their death. The duration is for four seconds. What that means is any missile locked onto you and tracking you loses its track, and no one can lock onto you for four more seconds. Um, it's kind of useful just for breaking those missile locks. 
However, it's got a 26 second cooldown and you can only use it once unless you get a recharge for someone. So for those reasons, it's pretty weak. That leaves our Seeker Warheads and they are honestly awesome. When you use this countermeasure, you fire out two little mini missiles that have a range of 750 meters. So you can affect missiles from a long ways away. Um, all they have to be is within that, that first Chiron of uh, the, the red indicators to, to use these um, or closer. And you're going to counter those missiles. You're going to shoot them down. It can counter two missiles at a time. Also works great against mines. And it can be used against mines that haven't activated yet either. So as soon as you know a mine is close by, you can just fire that off. 12 second cooldown is respectable. It's not super fast, but it's not super slow. And it has four uses, which oftentimes is enough. Um, especially if you're using my dogfighting build. Rarely are you going to have a situation where you're going to have... Um, a need for more than four of those. Next up is our hull, and there's four choices. However, they're not real great ones. The ferroceramic hull is just your standard hull. The reflect hull gives you a stealth effect, a passive stealth effect from super long range. So it's really outside the range of engagement. What that means is when you spawn at the start of battle or when you respawn in battle, People can't target you at those extreme ranges. Um, and that's all well and good, but not all that useful to you in a dogfight situation. Plus, it saps 30% of your health, which is a huge chunk of your health. You only have 775 max hull. So giving up 30% of that is a big chunk of your health. For those reasons, not a good option at all. Lamina Steel Hull um, works opposite of how I would want it to work. What it does is it decreases auxiliary damage taken, but increases primary damage taken. You're going to find that auxiliary weapons are not a huge threat to you. You're going to be able to counter a lot of missiles. You're going to be able to evade missiles. Um, so that's not your biggest threat. Most of the time, you're going to be dying to blaster fire, which this increases the damage you're going to receive from that. With the low amount of health you have, that's not a good option. So this one is a no. The dampener hull, however, is great. It doubles the amount of time it takes for the enemy to lock missiles on you. So quick fire missiles lock in 1.3 seconds. This boosts that up to 2.6. Your standard missiles from your tire X-Wing are looking at a two second lock time. This boosts it up to four. So it's really, really effective in boosting that lock time up. This means less missiles firing at you and it's only a 10% loss in health, which is manageable in this case. So in this ship, I would say either go with the ferroceramic hull or I really love the dampener hull and that's my go-to pick. Next up, we have our engines. Now there's the standard twin ion engine, which is fine, is actually one of the better choices when it comes to your strafers. Um, they want to keep the high speed and, and all the other stats kind of across the board where they are make those strafing runs and get out. The other options are the twin thrust engine, which is not very good. Um, it increases your max speed by 30% while lowering your acceleration and maneuverability by 30% each. This means it's very hard to react. It's harder to evade missiles. It's harder to lose targets. It's harder to deal with dogfight situations. It's harder to get onto enemy tails and react to their movement. For all those reasons, it's really a bad choice. The increased speed seems nice. You can get back into the battle real quick, but if you can't do anything once you get to the battle, eh, it's not that great. Twin propulsion engine is interesting, and it can be useful. It increases your acceleration dramatically. Um, 
and it is a noticeable change. You can really speed up and really slow down and, and really maneuver interesting ways because of that acceleration deceleration that you have. So it's not a bad option. However, it does sap your maneuverability a little bit. This can be an interesting choice for dogfighters, not my go-to choice. It is going to lower you down to maneuverability more akin to uh, the TIE Fighter, the TIE Reaper, and your, your bomber. Um, so you lose that maneuverability edge that the ship really has going for it. But the acceleration difference is huge. Interestingly enough, because of that change in acceleration, it can actually turn faster than drift turns. A full drift turn to do a 180 takes just under three seconds, where this ship with the twin propulsion engine can just turn in a little over two seconds. Uh, so by just hammering the speed down to 50% turning, you can actually get turned around really quick. You can actually just, um, when you start turning, lower your speed all the way, and then as soon as you hit zero, increase it all the way d through your turn, and you're going to turn just as fast because it, it gets that 50% so quickly and, and really gives you that maneuverability edge. So you can kind of make up for the loss of maneuverability on this with the speed control. Um, so by always being able to quickly hammer down to that 50%, you can actually regain that maneuverability pretty well. So this isn't a bad option, and it does give you some really quirky ways that you can speed around the battlefield. You can stop on a dime. You can take off in a new direction really quickly. You can turn really quickly. So it is kind of interesting. My pick, however, is the twin microthrust engine. A 30% increase in maneuverability allows you to turn on a dime. At 50% engine speed, again, you can beat out a drift turn. Um, you can turn in about two seconds and, and get a complete 180 turn on that. It makes it really easy to track enemy targets that are trying to throw you off. It makes it really easy to pilot around debris. Um, it's just a great increase in maneuverability, making you one of the most maneuverable ships in the game. If we go out and look at that, that puts your maneuverability at a 110 by giving you a 25 bonus to your maneuverability. That's huge. You look at a TIE Fighter that's got an 80 maneuverability, um, X-Wings have a 75, and you have a 110, you're going to be flying circles around things. And it, it really does help in those dogfight situations. You can cut the corners quicker, you can get on their tail quicker, you can juke and dodge really nice and fast. Um, so it is really nice. You do lose a lot of acceleration, so you speed up and slow down a little bit slower. That's where this propulsion engine actually gets that 50% a lot quicker. Um, and your max speed is significantly reduced. Now, max speed is going to hurt you when you respawn. You're going to have to spend some time throwing power to your engines so you can get a burst to get back into combat faster uh, but it will keep you out of combat a little bit longer so keep that in mind you are losing that speed which will hurt you on respawns but the gain to maneuverability is huge it is my default go-to engine not great for strafers strafers should probably stick to a standard engine but if you're a dogfighter this micro thrust engine is wonderful Keep in mind that with it, you can turn faster than a drift turn. So it's just amazing. Now for our ox weapons. Um, a default for me is almost always the repair system. I really love the repair system. Um, it's extra helpful on this ship because you don't have shields. So being able to, to regen the health that you lose from those exchanges is very useful. Um, we'll talk about some of the other ones before we get to the ones I really like. The targeting jammer is really good. It's really super effective. I find it super annoying. I hate fighting against players that are using this and using it well. I won't use it myself though. Not out of any particular reason other than the fact that I just don't like using it. Um, I don't find it's very effective for me. It's a great way to annoy me 
when I'm trying to kill you. Um, but I don't find that it saves me enough. And it's due to the long cooldown. What the targeting jammer does is it hides you from enemy radar for five seconds. It has a 30 second cooldown. That's a real long cooldown. But for those five seconds, you can't be locked on for missiles. You'll lose missile locks. It also means they can't target you. And I can't tell you, I can't explain it, but that targeting icon is so, so helpful. And when you lose that, ships can just disappear. You'll lose them in the debris. You'll just lose them when they make some quick little turn. You won't know which way they left. If they get out of your line of sight and then they make another turn, you're never going to track them down again. And they can turn around and get on your tail pretty easily then. So the targeting jammer is very effective. And as a defensive tool, it's amazing. But I don't like it. And it's due to the long cooldown. For a strafer, it's very powerful. You come screaming in, um, taking your shots. You can pop this targeting jammer and boost out of there. And no one's going to be able to hit you, do damage, lock on you. You're going to be basically immune from damage. It is very powerful for strafers. I don't like it for dogfighting. Next up is our ion rockets. And they're very similar to onslaught rockets. So I'm going to be talking about both of them a little bit here. Ion rockets do 300 ion damage. They can fire six shots a second. So you're going to fire these off extremely quickly. They're not the fastest projectiles, um, but they do have a thousand meter range. They're dumb fire, no locking. And they only have 30 of these rockets. It's not that useful in a dogfight. I really don't like them. Same goes for these Onslaught rockets. They do 100 damage to hull. They shoot four shots a second. They go 1,000 meters a second. They have a 1,000 meter range. And the cooldown is 0.3 seconds with a 40 ammo capacity. Again, dumb fired weapons. Dumb fired weapons in, in dogfights suck. If you don't have that lock, it's very hard to get these to actually hit the targets. Um, because if your target's screaming in at an angle, you got to try to lead them with these missiles. And any little deviation, that missile goes right by them, and you don't hit. So I don't like these in dogfights, with one exception. I will use them at the start of Yavin. I have a TIE Interceptor built with both the Onslaught and Ion Rockets. I will cruise in, fire my weapons, and unload all of those rockets in that first kind of mashup because in Yavin both teams start really close they fly at each other they fire weapons and a lot of ships blow up right there firing these ion rockets will strip their shields might deactivate some ships it'll increase the amount of damage you're doing um, they just work really well on that first exchange after that first exchange they're worthless I don't use that ship anymore I actually don't like to live past that first exchange just because I don't want to keep having to use those rockets. But it's kind of fun for that first exchange. Next up is our cluster missile. The XG-9 cluster missile. These are interesting. Um, they do 450 damage per missile. You can fire four of them at one target. It takes eight seconds per missile to lock on, though. If um, you, you have them in your sights, 0.8 seconds into it, you lock a missile. At 1.6 seconds, you have two missiles locked. At 3.2 seconds, you'll have four missiles locked. However, if they have any way to reduce that, and the Rebels do have some ways to reduce your, your targeting speed there, that could be amplified greatly. And in these dogfights, you don't have a lot of time to get those lock-ons like that. Now, you're looking at it and you're going, okay, well, still, if I can only get one or two locked on, that's pretty good yet. Um, I can do 450, maybe 900 damage. That's certainly better than over here, the 375, right? 
problem is you have a 12 second cooldown and a limited ammo capacity of five shots. So if you're using this to fire off one missile, you're doing slightly more damage than your quicker missiles. Um, and then you have a 12 second cooldown and you can only do it five times. These are not good for your, your dog fighting brawler type pilot. They can be really good for the strafers though. If you're making those long strafing runs, you can line up your shot and make sure you get two, three, maybe four locks, fire those missiles off, hit them with your long range blasters, hopefully kill someone before you peel out. So in that case, these cluster missiles are nice. The other part with that kind of long load time that you have is if you can get four shots going, it's a lot harder for their countermeasures to do anything about it because the countermeasures I like to use only can counter two of those missiles means I'm still going to get hit with the additional ones you shot at me. The long cooldown hurts, but if you're a strafer, it doesn't hurt as much. The weapon I typically use is the anti-starfighter missile. 375 damage, a nice quick 1.3 second lock, a very quick 4 second cooldown, which is great. You can get these um, fired off surprisingly quickly. They lock fast, they fire fast, they recharge fast. I get a lot of use out of these. The, the worst part about it is ammo capacity eight. I often run out of these missiles. Um, I can stay long, I can stay alive long enough that these missiles run out and I'm stuck without a secondary weapon then. The other advantage these have over your cluster missile, cluster missile is medium homing only. This anti-starfighter missile is a strong homing missile. This means it travels faster and turns sharper. So it's harder for them to evade. It gives them less time to react with countermeasures. Um, it's gonna hit that target a little bit quicker. So keep that in mind, this does have some advantages there. So if you're a, a close in range brawler, I would say anti-starfighter missile. If you're a strafer, the cluster missile gives you a nice edge. Last up, I hate to even mention it, is this Seeker Mine. Um, it does amazing damage. 900 damage can often knock out Interceptor class ships in one hit. When you deploy a mine, it lasts for 10 seconds. Um, the arming range, it'll arm on any ship that gets within 200 meters of it, which 200 meters is a surprisingly long range. Its cooldown is nine seconds. And you have six of them, which is insane. That's a fast cooldown of nine seconds. You have six of these things. They last for 10 seconds at a time. So you can actually have a situation where you have two mines out at the same time, uh, possibly going after the same target. They do have a short delay in arming, but it's like a two second delay, maybe three, but I think it's more like two seconds. So you drop that mine. It takes two seconds before it can activate. Um, but that's really quick. If you're jousting with a target, you can drop it right in front of them. By the time they pass it, it's probably going to activate on them and start chasing them. Um, if you get into a tail chase dogfight situation, you can drop that mine in that case. They're going to stay close in on you and they're going to get hit by that, that mine. So I really hate that effect there. Um, they activate too quickly, their arming range is a little too high, they stay on the battlefield too long, ammo's too high, damage is way too high. Now there's plenty of ways to counter these mines. There really are. You can shoot them. You can shoot them well before the arming range. Um, and they just take one quick blast, you're going to knock it out. Countermeasures work against them, so your chaff particles will work against them, um, and your seeker missiles will work against them. And the Seeker missiles can even work against them before they're armed. So as soon as the enemy deploys them, you can just hit those. And that's what I do a lot of times. Um, you can just avoid them, too. They are strong homing, though. So once you activate them, you're going to be so close that there's really not much you can do if you haven't already figured out how to counter them. So I'm telling you that so that you learn how to counter them. Keep those Seeker countermeasures ready for them. 
or shoot them if you see them at long range. Um, learn to counter these things. These things are way overpowered. I can deal with them, but a lot of rookie players can't. I've seen these things absolutely decimate teams because you get three or four rookie players in there. They don't know how to deal with these mines. The mines are blowing them up left and right. It's just absolutely ridiculous. These honestly need a nerf because they're too powerful against new players. Um, but as of right now, this is how they are. And so they make a really effective weapon. If you're a dogfighter, you're in those close range brawls. They're great for getting people off your tail. They're great for doing damage and joust. They're great for those tail chase situations where you can drop and either deter them or kill them with that. They're a little less useful for your strafers, but they're still not bad. You can still plant one if someone's chasing you, or you can drop it right when you make your pass on a, a couple enemy ships. You can be targeting one, drop it in front of another one. So they do have some play there. Um, I hate using them though, so I, I really don't want to recommend them, but they are extremely effective. So that's a rundown of all the equipment for the Interceptor. It's a little bit shorter list than the A-Wing because we don't have to talk about shields at all and the way that those shields can interact with some of our other upgrades. Um, we are missing those shields, but we have more health because of that. Also, the TIE Interceptor is a little more maneuverable and speedy than the A-Wing, so it has some slight advantages there. So my standard build for uh, those close-range brawling matches I'm going to go with the rapid fire cannon. I'm going to go with the repair system, the anti starfighter missiles, the seeker warheads. I'm going to go with that dampener hull to make lock ons harder, and the micro thrust engines. If I were making a strafing build, I would probably go with the laser cannon. I'd probably go with the cluster missiles. Probably keep the seeker warheads. Um, I would probably keep the dampener hull and here I would either switch it out for the propulsion or probably go twin ions. Um, make those long passes using the standard laser long range fire and line up those cluster missile shots. But you're going to see me all the time in that other build that I just showed you because um, it's a great build. It does great damage. It keeps you in the battles. Um, you get in close, right in that punching range. You can outpilot the enemy. You can swerve around debris nice and quickly um, to dodge things or, or get missiles off your tail or whatnot. So it's a great ship. It's very effective. I think the Interceptor class of ships is far superior to the other ships. Um, you know, sure, your your standard fighters, your your X-Wings and your TIE Fighters have more health or shields. Um, they have a different set of weaponry. They're a little more durable, but they're slower. They're less maneuverable, and they can't deliver the damage punch like you can with the Interceptors. Your bombers, especially now that they've been nerfed a little bit, are big, slow, lumbering giants. They have a lot of hit points, and they're going to be hard to take those hit points down but they're not a gigantic threat to you because it's hard for them to maneuver to get you into their line of sh uh, line of fire and to actually shoot you down. The support ships, they have some shields, they have some decent health, they're kind of moderate all around for, for stats. Um, honestly, in an interceptor or an A-wing, I love seeing support ships because they're big, easy, slow lumbering targets that I can just tear apart. They don't have the health of the bombers so you can really cut into them quickly with your your boost, your 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 burst fire, um, your rapid fire cannon kind of stuff. Um, I'm always happy to see those support ships out there. So that's our builds, that's our equipment rundowns um, for the interceptor. Hopefully that'll help you be a better pilot out there. Uh, please don't use them against me. Uh, that would be really nice of you. Um, if you're going against me, just fly support ships. Uh, that's great strategy against me. I love seeing those. <laughs> um, thanks for watching. Uh, please remember to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.